Okay, uh, record. I just put into the chat room the phone number in case uh, somebody else needs it. So um, thanks, looks like we have quite a few others uh, joining. And let's see, let me, was I trying to go here? <clears throat> Okay, share and share. All right, so my name's Steve Mooney. I'm with Airspring. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay, and um, introduce Joe Brogdon. Joe, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, my name is Joe Brogdon. I'm the National Channel Director for Airspring. I've uh, been with the company now uh, 11 years, going on 12 years, so. Appreciate the opportunity to uh, touch base with you all. Yeah, and I've been with Airspring uh, about 18 months and I was with TPX for 18 years before that. So um, I know a few of you in the industry and we appreciate you taking time. Um, one of the reasons I think I came over to Airspring because it is a family owned business. We only deal with agents. So we don't have direct sales reps. Uh, we do have account management. Anything they add to any account goes directly to your bottom line. So there's no infighting, which I think we've all seen with some of the carriers. And in today's world where you have venture capitalists and uh, being bought out, buying out a bunch of these uh, different carriers, it's nice to have a family run business that focuses on security, um, VeloCloud, SD-WAN circuits and all that. And we'll go through uh, some of those things. But um, besides that, I think you guys recently just did a training and uh, that's when Sergio reached out to me and said, hey, can we, we do one here? So besides that, Joe, any things you wanna uh, drop in on? Um, Air Spring in general? No, I mean, other than the fact that, you know, family owned and operated, we answer to basically our channel partners like yourself and our customers, um, which kind of makes it refreshing. We don't, we don't make decisions that are counterintuitive to what you folks want or need. So that's kind of how we're built. Go ahead. And we, when we say family owned, we really mean it. It's three brothers that run the organization. And um, again, we, we, we like that touch and feel. So again, I talked about channel focused. We only use agents, all right? And I think that's a very important thing in today's world. Some changes that we've really made and one of the reasons I believe I came over here is the investment that Avi, our president, has put into the industry. So John Young was brought over a couple years, two and a half, three years ago, and he has grown our channel substantially. Um, before they had, you know, a handful, half a dozen uh, channel managers. Um, John has grown that from a regional standpoint. Um, and one of the later slides will show actually our growth. So our coverage for ACS is, uh, robust and extreme. So besides John Young on the left, we have Russ Shipley. Russ Shipley is our COO and he was number two under um, Dick Jalkett at TPX. Phenomenal. Uh, smart guy, process oriented, um, has made a life changing decisions here and really focused on our provisioning and our back-end customer service and support, which, you know, those are the keys for everything. We also brought Mike James over, 
uh, to run account management. Um, and a few of the other key ones I'd like to bring up is we have really gone global. Um, Joseph Goodyear has been brought in. He uh, has lived in London, South Africa. He has all those uh, connections and it's been a huge win for us. I just closed a $10,000 deal in China uh, where we have, um, we're, we're actually co load behind the Great Wall of China. So we're able to internationally expand that. Um, and then there's also somebody here that we recently added that's not made it onto this deck yet, and that's uh, mobility. Um, today, we really have a 4G failover, uh, which is a good product and it works well. But we know that area is blowing up and is going to grow. So we don't know what we have yet, but in the next 90 days, you're going to see uh, a big um, play on our cellular offering. I talked about, if anybody could go on mute, that would be great. Um, so we talked about our regional growth. As you can see here, we don't need to go through any of the names. Well, the important ones, myself, I'm in California and have always lived in the greater Sacramento area and primarily cover the West Coast. Um, but again, it's all about relationships, anything you need, it doesn't matter if it's in Ohio or New York or, or Florida or what have you, you know, we're here to help and assist you. Um, bunch of awards we've won, I won't dive into those, you know, um, I think you guys are all aware of a lot of those things uh, that uh, are given out. So a few of our accounts and customers that we brought on, big name logos. So if you ever need any references, you guys do a lot of business with us and I think you have enough accounts, but if you ever need, I don't know, a custom uh, reference, be a hotel or a vertical market, um, feel free to let us know and uh, we'll, we'll provide that obviously. Um, I talked about bringing on a lot of new bodies and we're really focused and I, I like this because it's it really talks about it's the customer right as long as we're taking care of your customer we're paying you and the install goes good you know the rest of it all falls into place and we keep growing and adding more products um, so I think most of our bag our portfolio is pretty good um, and growing as we speak. So we also talked about uh, service and the quality of that. Um, I think one of the things I'd really like to dive into is everybody gets a project manager, everybody gets an account manager, and we have dedicated engineers that work on each and every deal. Um, for any of the larger deals, we also have executive overview. We call it a large uh, deal uh, meeting that it happens once a week. Any deal that comes in, sold or unsold, um, they want to look at, they want to help, they want to make sure it's proposed right, sold right, priced right, things of that nature. So. We put a team of everybody together and make sure that um, we, from, from start to finish, that we take care of you. And um, I think we're doing a great job and we keep adding more and more uh, support. I'm gonna briefly go through our product line here. Um, we, we have on the far left in the upper corner is UCAST. We have two flavors of ice cream nowadays. Um, one you might not know about. The first one is our Microsoft MetaSwitch, uh, which is a great, I hate to use this word, but lower end product. We give away the phones for free. All you do is pay for the seat, you know, pay for the uh, auto attendance. So I think we're a very good fit for the lower end market. We found a big gap that we didn't have on call center and things of that nature. Instead of trying to build that, what we've done is we are going to be selling eight by eight. What we have heard in the industry, and I don't know if your opinions uh, differ, but eight by eight 
really has a good product, but people don't like dealing with them, their implementation, their customer service. So we thought good product, we are great at service. That's why we brought it in. And let's be honest, it's for the higher end call center, contact center offerings. So that's something brand new to you guys. And if you have it, um, bring it on board and uh, we'll work with John Kitchen and um, he's our uh, engineer that's uh, pre-sales that we can uh, bring on board uh, for any uh, hosted. SIP trunking, we process six to seven billion calls a month on our network. So we do a lot of large call center um, pricing. Our, most of our large volume are under a penny. Um, and you guys all can pick and choose your uh, commissions and residuals. So um, we're flexible on that. So if we need to lower or if we have room to raise, uh, we have that flexibility. And a key part of that is, you know, let, let's take a scenario where we have, I don't know, a one gig pipe, an SD-WAN box, uh, five POTS lines. And we're trying to find the math, trying to get to a certain MRC. We could drop your POTS lines to 5%, knowing those are gonna be going down the road and keep your main core products at a higher residual. This way you make more money, but we're still getting to the monthly reoccurring that the customers expect, expecting or wanting. So again, SIP trunking, we do a lot of LV voice. Joe, you're kind of an expert on LV voice. You wanna give a 30 second uh, info commercial on that? Sure. Our LD Voice product, uh, first of all, we have what's called Santa SBCs, carrier grade SBCs. They're geo redundant. Uh, we've got one major pop in uh, New York, the other one in LA. Uh, we also have pops in Chicago and Dallas, but our two voice pops and they're geo redundant, which means that uh, they both provide backup for each other. Our LD SIP product could be multiple flavors. It can be included with a managed circuit where we guarantee QoS or it can be over the top. Um, and we don't charge for the LD SIP channels. So as many SIP channels as the customer needs, um, we can deploy. Uh, the other thing that's nice about us is you'll hear industry information like six and six. Uh, we do six decimal rounding uh, and six uh, second increments in terms of billing. Um, the other thing is, is our toll free. Uh, first of all, we're our own rest board. Uh, so we can port uh, toll-free numbers over to our network. And more importantly, <clears throat> our toll-free, uh, we actually have a patent on it where uh, we can actually exclude certain carrier routes on our toll-free traffic to be able to build in some redundancy. Let me give you an example. We've got a hospital, major hospital uh, conglomerate in the state of Utah. Uh, they currently have Lumen for uh, some of their LD traffic. Um, they didn't want us using Lumen's uh, paths and Lumen's routes uh, to terminate our 800 traffic. So we said, that's fine. So we backed out all the Lumen routes and used all the other routes that we have with all our underlying carriers building in a redundant network on their toll-free inbound traffic. So a lot of flexibility there. Uh, the other thing Steve mentioned is you can choose your own flavor in terms of a rate. For example, we can get below a penny um, and you're still going to have a very solid residual provided to you. Um, actually to the masters in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 percent. So, uh, and the other thing that's nice about our LD is we do not have minimums uh, in terms of what the customer needs to spend with us. They will get that price day one, uh, minute one associated with any type of LD applications. So we're great with call centers. Um, the time of year now where you've got the robo calls going out, we're guilty as charged. We ask you that when you get a robocall, just kind of pick up your phone and put it down for about three minutes because that helps us make money. Um, but at the end of the day, we're LD SIP, we're very good at. Um, we can also do PRI handoffs. Um, but at the end of the day, SIP, LD, local, I mean, that's definitely within our wheelhouse. We still have pots for a week or two or however long that lasts, but. Um... 
we all know we're kind of coming to the end there. Um, we have also uh, came out with a pots replacement, um, kind of the pots in a box type of thing. Um, so if you have that opportunity, bring us uh, to it. Um, I move over to the second column, business internet. Um, internet's internet, right? But I think what we do, which is very unique and different, we have fixed wireless, we have 4G, we have satellite. We have, I think we have over a hundred different uh, carriers we're connected with, you know, fiber, coax, you know, every option under the sun. I think we have, of those hundred plus, over 30 of them we have NNIs with. If you're not familiar, that's a network interface. So it's basically just being on net. Um, and I think that helps us a lot. Um, again, we do MPLS, but we're seeing a huge push towards uh, managed SD-WAN. Um, some, some of you may have, about once a month, Mike Chase, um, our data guru, is what I call him. Um, he sits on the board for VMware, which uh, owns VeloCloud, um, which is really helpful for us. Anytime a new feature comes out, uh, we're first in line. We're always on the latest, um, greatest uh, release from them, which is critical and not everybody is. And we have our own uh, gateways uh, directly to VeloCloud. Uh, we also have a, the less inexpensive Meraki, um, and we have Fortinet, who does site-to-site -site connectivity besides security, um, so it has multiple interests there. We're adding, I just got done, Joe and I were in Dallas at uh, our uh, national sales meeting, and we are coming out with um, Fortinet uh, Wi-Fi. So we're going to have that, which is a hole in our portfolio we've been asking for. So uh, Fortinet uh, Wi-Fi is coming to you uh, very, very soon. Uh, 4G, 5G, mobility. I talked about bringing on the new uh, IT guy in mobility. And we're going to see in the next 90 days it kind of changes there. Um, and it's, I'm going to pick it up a little and uh, go through here. Um, Manage failover, I mean, SD-WAN, 4G, uh, coax, uh, so many different ways for us to manage the failover. Uh, let it, another thing we do a lot of is uh, fiber and then fixed wireless. So you have land and air, um, diversity. Um, SASE is coming aboard. Um, so that is gaining interest. I don't know how much is going to be sold of that. Um, I, but it will be there. Um, we manage routers, switches, and then the air NMS network monitoring. I think I talked about that at the beginning briefly. That is a free service that your customer and you have visibility to the network. Um, there's no charge for that. We'll throw in a free ad trend. So you, we can see it. Obviously, if we don't have a router there, we don't have visibility. So another thing I think is a value add that we offer at no cost. Um, and again, I talked about international. I don't know how much you guys are doing of international, but I see this as um, not as competitive market when you go out into global management, uh, because what do you have? Cato, Arioca, us, and maybe a couple others that are doing global SD-WAN. Um, so that and the fact that we have multiple connectivity where they can get one bill, I think that's huge. Okay, kind of talked about the backup and all the options there. I don't think I have to go into that. We talked about global, some of the customers. Um, here's a little screen of our global SD-WAN. Um, we're setting up uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Obviously, we have uh, North America covered otherwise, uh, Europe. We're in China. We're going to uh, Australia relatively soon, I believe. Uh, so I don't know, is it 
Are we going to be in Johannesburg, Joe? I, didn't, I, I hadn't heard South Africa, so I'm not sure about that one. Well, given the fact that the owners are originally from South Africa, <laughs> chances are probably pretty high. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, we're, we're constantly expanding the footprint that we have uh, from a global perspective. What that means is both fiber and broadband. And then, of course, uh, our gateways will be able to provide end -to end encrypted traffic um, or if the customer just wants the capabilities of SD-WAN for failover, we can do it over the top and just provide them the failover capabilities. So a lot of different flavors. Uh, what we're finding and the reason why we're getting into global is there's a lot of domestic multi-location customers that have a lot of international sites and we're finding we're getting a lot of traction with, with that. In fact, uh, we just came across, we just closed a deal where uh, a customer has as many uh, domestic locations as they do international. So they like the fact that they can work through one vendor, uh, one bill, one solution provider. So we're, we're getting a lot of traction as a result of that. Okay. Um, here's Gartner just pulling up VMware, uh, Velo Cloud. Um, <laughs> if your guys aren't aware of that, it's just, I, it's such a great product. I sell it 99% of the time. I think I've sold one Meraki. Um, and that was based off of cost. Um, so another thing I was talking about, Mike Chase being on the board for VMware, uh, this is something that came out of that. It's the intelligence that's coming out of uh, SD-WAN and the capabilities on reporting and all that. So this was something that was an add-on feature. And a lot of times carriers will charge for that. We just added it right in, no charge whatsoever. So to me, that just shows that, you know, we're not here to gouge you. We're trying to give you the best products at a for affordable pricing. Um, we haven't talked too much about the portals, but uh, Fortinet, SD-WAN, um, our Air MNS, which is a network monitoring service. All these portals are included free, we don't charge for, and in today's world, everybody wants a portal. They want to see what's going on and be able to interface uh, with uh, their their network without making a phone call. Um, and just just to add to that, our, our sales engineers are all certified on all these applications. So if you come across an IT person that wants to do a deep dive into our portals, um, just get with Steve. We'll get a sales engineer engaged. We'll walk them through the whole scenario. Okay. Had a request yesterday for one. <laughs> so, there you go. Beautiful. Um, yeah, it, we could do a really deep dive when needed. Otherwise, sometimes people just get glossed over when we go through that. So, um, circling back, multi-location. I mean, let's be honest. We uh, we'll take any order of any size. We have a two hundred and fifty dollar minimum, which I think is more than fair. Um, obviously, we can go below 250 if you have multiple sites and things like that. Um, we're not worried about that, but I think large deals, 5, 10, plus thousand, 20, 50, what have you, and on forward, um, we're really good at multiple locations. I have to tell you, I think as a company this year, we're going to do 2 million in sales, which is by far our largest. And besides that, uh, we probably had, um, what would you say, Joe, about five deals that were 50 to 100K? Yeah, I mean, here, here's what we're seeing in the market right now, team. Um, back in the old days, a lot of these IT people were like, I, I can never go wrong with going with a logo, right? AT&T, Verizon, you know, I'm never going to get fired doing that. Well, the reality of the situation is these IT people that are coming in now understand the concept of let's just build a better network. Let's work with a carrier um, with a solution provider that can provide us flexibility, that can provide us built-in redundancy, that I can work through a single carrier concept that already has the relationships with all the different underlying carriers Steve mentioned those NNIs. Those NNIs are expensive. and We pay a lot of money for those, but that allows us to build networks under the Airspring umbrella using different 
underlying carriers for the last mile. So what we're seeing is a lot of IT people out there going, hey, I just need somebody that is a solution provider that's easy to work with, that can handle you know, all the aspects of all the different underlying carriers and be able to manage that effectively and be able to do that through a single trouble ticket scenario. So what I'm telling you is the days of the IT guys saying, oh, I'm gonna just go with a logo. I think those days are over. I think what they're looking at now is solution providers out there, very similar to actually exactly what we do, that gives them the flexibility, gives them the multiple applications, is solutions oriented and doesn't always say no. I mean, if we come across something that's unique, we sit back and we go, okay, well, let's How do we do it. it. Yeah. And we do it. And the beauty of it is we're a relatively flat organization, even though we're 300 plus strong, you know, when you've got the owners that are also the executives in the organization, those decisions can be made relatively quickly. So that's kind of what we're seeing in the marketplace. You know, for years, Airspring was a uh, the little engine that could. Well, guess what? We can. Um, and we can do it. We can do it at a very large scale. Steve mentioned, you know, we're bringing on talent. We also brought on a gentleman by the name of Steve Pasmanic. Steve was, Steve was very, very highly regarded in AT&T's uh, Apex or their channel program. We're bringing him over to run service delivery and report up to um, uh, Rush Shipley. So, you know, we're, we're not cutting talent. We're gaining talent. Uh, we're expanding the organization. And what we found is we can win. And we're, we're being successful in winning and doing so. And, you know, I'm running through the, the numbers right now. We've got over $850,000 of revenue run rate. And a lot of those are multi-location opportunities just for the fourth quarter. So just food for thought. Thanks, Joe. Sure. Uh, we talked about the portals. Uh, I think that's in the last, I don't know, 24 months has been what, you guys have been screaming and yelling about, hey, we need we need access. Um, and again, that's the RMS. I'm not going to go into that. Here's something very unique and different that we have a really good quoting system that you can do all your own quotes if you want. Um, Sergio is. I'll use you as an example. I just tell Sergio just. Send me an address, tell me what you need. I'll do the work for you. You go sell, you look for the opportunities. I don't want you to be great at my admin, admin stuff, but there are people that will want this. If you want this, reach out to me. We'll, we'll do a one-on-one -on -one and go through everything um, so you will understand how to run your own quotes. Um, it's recently been updated. We put a lot of time and effort into it. It's somewhat simple with drop downs on speeds and things like that. Um, and you can do multiple different quotes, um, just drop down boxes. So we try to make that uh, foolproof, so to speak. Um, yeah, the, the, only other, the, the only other thing I want to add to that, I don't know if we have some back office people on the call or not, but not only will that system generate quotes, it will also allow you to track your orders. Okay, you'll be able to look at the milestones, see who the project coordinator is, see who the implementation engineer is, all the notations associated with that order. You know, if you've got number porting going on, where we are in terms of the status and number portability and those sort of things. So it's not just a front end interface, it's a great back end interface for the operations people within our partner organization to be able to track their orders effectively. Sorry, Steve, go ahead. No, excellent point. You can tell I'm a sales guy, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I got so, you. Um, and then on the flip side, here's something that uh, I know a few companies do, but you have every individual and it goes all the way up to the top. If you want to look at the bottom of the screen, you know, this is Avi, the president. So we have different levels that you can go through. What I try to tell you again, I want you sell and dump it on me. I'll pull the people in and let you go back to doing your job and, and not trying to find the needle in the haystack or the problem or what have you. Um, I know I'm in sales and my job's to help support you, but I look at that as freeing your time up. So 
Um, you have a challenge that's not going anywhere. Um, one thing I love is uh, Greg Haynes has really made a big difference in this organization. He came by, oh, about four or five years ago, he came to Airspring. I worked with him in the past for years. Great guy, but he put together a lot of internal things that help us open tickets. So the last thing I saw was 92% of our, our tickets we open and the customer's not even aware of it. So we open it and then tell the customer, hey, FYI, I see your coax circuits down. I opened a ticket uh, and we'll open tickets for other carriers that we might not even have ordered it from us. We don't charge for that. Now I'm not going to follow it through and have my, my team follow if you're with, I don't know, pick somebody, Spectrum's coax. But we will open that ticket for you. So again, we're trying to help you. And then here is just the escalation list that, you know, starts at level one and goes all the way up to the top. Um, Joe, anything else you want to add before we kind of open it up to uh, PK and Sergio and the rest of the group? No, let's, let's hear some questions. We look forward to them. What's, what's on everybody's mind? You were that thorough? Wow. <laughs> hey, Steve, this is Sergio. Quick question. Um, you know, something that's come up a lot, especially when working with our partners, is, you know, SD-WAN. Um, can you talk about more about just, you know, your guys' product and, you know, what you guys like to position and some good wins you've had? Absolutely. Um, so I think when I started here, um, circuits were unique for me because a lot of companies were getting out of the circuit business saying, I don't want to sell them. There's no money, so on and so forth. That's not how we look at it. But when, when I started here, I went, okay, you sell a circuit, you lose a circuit. It's on price when that term comes up. You add SD-WAN to it. Now it's a more, uh, it's a better product that it will not be jumping ship in three years as easily. Um, in my opinion, the Gartner 100, my experience selling Velo Cloud for the last, what, five, six years or whatever it's been, um, and having my uh, CIO basically on the board for VMware, um, I like Velo Cloud. It, it just is, we have our own private gateways there. Um, it really, we don't charge for the boxes either, unless it's a super high-end box, but your average box, the Velo Cloud 610, 620, we give you the box. All we do is charge you for the size of tunnel you want. This is really what's helped me, Sergio. I, you know, I've done, I did a 15 site that was a bandwidth only deal. We ended up making so much more money by adding the SD-WAN, it eliminated most competition. Not many people could give one bill and VMware and the quality of it um, is spectacular. Now, as a caveat to that, we can do Meraki. Like I said, it's, um, I mean, SD-WAN's good product. Meraki's a good product. Um, it's less money. Uh, we don't have the private gateways and things that we have for VeloCloud, so there is a difference there. And then again, Fortinet um, is the third site-to-site -site connectivity. Yeah, it's a firewall, um, but it gives you site-to-site -site connectivity and it will have Wi-Fi capabilities. So those are our three. Uh, Joe, you've had some success, obviously, with SD-WAN. You want to give an example or two? Sure, yeah. First of all, to qualify to three flavors, uh, VMware Velo is our gold standard. Hit list failover, you can be on a call. If you have a circuit drop with, a, with two circuits going through VMware, you're not gonna drop the call. Hit list failover, it's the Cadillac. Um, the reason why we use Fortinet is because quite frankly, they've got a great firewall solution, okay? So there's customers that need firewall and SD-WAN solution. We go with the Fortinet solution. We feel it's it's, you know, their, their, their firewall, in, in our opinion, is superior. Um, in fact, we think it's superior to Palo Alto 
who kind of run neck and neck with us, but they're a little Which bit is more 10 expensive. times the price too. <laughs> Way more expensive. And then, and then Meraki, we picked up really from a perspective of, it doesn't do hitless failover. It does some SD-WAN and it does have a firewall, but it's, their firewall is nowhere near as deep in terms of the cap capabilities as Fortinet. So those are the three different flavors. Um, and that's why we've, choose, uh, we've chosen them. Uh, Steve mentioned the flex licensing. That's huge for us. The customer, I don't know if you- well, Hold on, Joe. Let's go into the flex licensing because I think we skipped I, I over that. I, I will. I'll, I'll do a deep dive. The flex licensing, what I want you guys to think about is those insurance commercials. The customer only pays for what they need, okay? So I could deploy a Velo VMware 620 box, which could support all the way up to a gig, okay? But the customer's critical applications are only going to require about 200 meg of throughput for the VMware Velo box. What we do is we'll deploy the VMware Velo 620, which can support up to a gig of throughput, but we're only gonna charge the customer a 200 meg license because that's all they need. That's the only traffic they need going through the VMware Velo application, which means the customer doesn't have to pay for the total box capabilities. They're only paying for what they need to go through the, the, the box itself in the flex and, license. And Joe, most, most out there, if not all of them, you get, you get the whole thing. You have a gig, that's it. You don't, right. you don't get to downsize the, the tunnel. And right. explain, explain a little bit deeper on the tunnel, what's the value? I know you, know, you have 10 oh. sites and you're, yeah. you're using the well, tunnel to kick the headquarters to pull from right. one of the servers. So let's talk about what the tunnel does. First of all, you can prioritize your traffic going through the tunnel. There's 3,300 off-the-shelf applications that come with the VMware Velo Orchestrator, which is basically what manages the tunnel. So you can pick and choose what you want as a hierarchy level. Voice is critically important. You can make that priority one. The difference with VMware Velo is, first of all, it tries to reshape the packet if there's jitter and latency on it. It tries to reshape it. It then has forward air correction and if it can't do any of those things, then that packet will actually fail over to the other circuit, okay? Very, very different for VMware versus other providers, SD-WAN providers. If there's packet loss or there's something wrong and there's jitter on a, on a certain application, most, if not all of the other SD-WAN providers will automatically fail that application over to the other circuit. The other problem with that is it's not hitless. So the customer could actually see up to about a 30 second delay if they're in the middle of doing a data transfer or let's say they're on a call and for some reason that packet is not shaping correctly or the packet you're seeing packet loss, that customer could lose up to 30 seconds with another SD-WAN provider versus VMware Velo. They're not even gonna know their circuit was down, okay? So that's the fundamental difference we, with VMware Velo. What's the fundamental difference with AirSpring? We own and maintain our own SD-WAN gateways. There's other VMware Velo providers out there that resell, uh, obviously, VMware Velo. They do not have their own gateways. They use the shared gateways that are deployed by VMware Velo. So VMware Velo owns those gateways. We own our own gateways. Not only do we own those domestically, but we own them internationally. So what does that mean? That means that end-to-end -end application solution is owned and supported by AirSpring. The other thing is this, and it's funny because he mentioned Mike Chase, we deployed the latest software VMware Velo on our gateways. VMware actually came to us and asked us how we deployed it. You know, what did it look like? How did we do it effectively? So not only are we a partner with VMware Velo, we're, we're one of their leading providers in terms of the SD-WAN applications out there. So Fundamental differences. We talked about our wheelhouse is, is SIP. Ladies and gentlemen, our wheelhouse is SD-WAN. We're good at it. We've been good at it for a number of years now. We have top engineers, not only pre-sales, but post-sales in the country that will work with your team to be able to deliver the solution that the customer is looking for. I will put our SD-WAN applications and our engineering expertise 
up against any other provider out there in the industry. And at, at the end of the day, you're our sales team too. Remember that, you know, we don't have a direct team. So you are our sales team. So we're going to provide you every support out there that we can to help you close an opportunity. You need an engineer, come to me. Uh, Mike Chase, you know, John Chuck, we got a Melvin, we got a ton of them. Um, I can schedule their time and have them ready for your call. Not a problem whatsoever. The other thing I want to add on the SD-WAN too is, I'm, some of you might know this, but I'm just gonna, I just don't want to miss it. So obviously we can go active-active. So you have fiber and then coax fixed wireless, and, you know, satellite, whatever. Uh, you can go active and then your secondary can be active standby 4G that's ready to kick in whenever it is. A lot of times I, I find coax a better solution than 4G just because you have active active. You have two circuits. Right. Basically, they're bonded together. Joe, what, how many ports are in the back of that now? Is it last I heard four? Well, four in the 620, but you can go bigger. You know, the bigger the box, the more ports it, you can It get grows in. from there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you can put wireless, you can put point to point, you can put DIA, broadband, fiber, fixed, you know, anything you want through that box. But there, the other question was um, wins. Uh, I sold a 174 location and it's a retail outfit um, based out of Texas. They're expanding. They bought from me broadband, a Velo box with only 30 mega throughput because all they were worried about was their voice their cameras and their point of sale, everything else they didn't care about. And we did a wireless backup solution, AT&T broadband wireless backup solution for every single one of their stores. The total MRC on that deal is $75,000 a month. Uh, another deal we just recently sold, very, very large insurance company. Uh, not only did they want VMware Velo, we also did uh, fiber circuits. We also did point to point circuits. We did this both domestically, internationally. Right now, the MR total monthly recurring uh, revenue to Airspring is stacking up to be about $105,000 a month. Um, another application retail outfit based out of Birmingham, same scenario. All three of the things that I talked about under retail, but they also added our voice. So they put in their Air PBX solution, like Steve mentioned, great for a retail environment, that deal in total MRC is probably going to run about sixty-five dollars to $70,000 a month. These deals are out there, folks. You just got to be able to be patient and work with them. And quite frankly, we've got the resources and the team to be able to support it, not only sell it, but support it going forward. Just some ideas. And the other thing I like to throw out, your $75,000 deal at 20% residuals, 15 grand a month. So that's, yeah, that's yeah. not chicken I mean, scratch. You know, that's, that's pretty it, decent. Um, it, it's, it's pretty decent. I agree. Yeah, over three years, it's 540 grand. So um, Sergio did that cover it. Is there any follow-ups on SD-WAN or anything else you want to ask? No, I think you both are very thorough and I uh, appreciate the response. Absolutely. Sorry. Any other questions out there? No? I mean, I guess the question is this. Um, do you think there, were, there are those type of opportunities out there that you folks can find and work them? And I mean, I, I guess I'm trying to get a feel for the market. You, you tell us what you see out there. We're kind of telling you what we see. What do you folks see? Okay. I guess are we? Uh, I guess we lulled them into false sense of security. I, I don't know. What yeah. happens when you put you and I on the? We talk so much, <laughs> they all jumped out the window. <laughs> They're like, I'm sick and tired of watching Max Hedrum just spout out all kinds of sales <laughs> stuff. Uh, anyway, um, hey, at the end of the Patrick, day, I just emailed you an opportunity. Uh, oh, cool for a, a PRI handoff type product. We can talk after the meeting about it if you like. Sure. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you. You guys have been wonderful. Um, hopefully I'm doing a good job for you. I try to be as accessible as possible. Always answer my phone. Um, 
if there's anything you need or anything you want me to do better or different, I'm all ears. I, I have no rules. I'm here to support you. And trust me, when Steve says he has no rules, he means it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I will. All right, Appreciate gang. Well, thanks for your back. time, everybody. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thanks, thanks Steve. Guys. Have a good day. All right.